So swords are cool. But what if we want to be extra cool? Or you might dual wield two swords, right? Not edgy enough? You want to be more unique? Well, how about one in conventional grip and the other in reverse grip, huh? Still not unique enough. Okay, got something for you. This right here. As seen in good old skies of Arcadia, does this make any sense? Let's explore a little bit. Pros and cons and other observations. This video is sponsored by Walter Yates, the author of a fantasy novel, Ganaran Trials of Shedonia, which takes place on the matriarchal continent of Ejana, roughly comparable to a mix between late medieval and early modern period without firearms. In this story, the three main characters have to deal with rising hostility from other tribes after thousands of peaceful years. And this is realistic fantasy without magic, rooted in study of military strategy and history. The novel came out recently and has already gotten very positive reviews views. Check it out. Link in the description. If I'm using this right here, um, I can of course use it for defense, you know, just like a tonfa, bracing the, the blade against the arm. So if he cuts at me, I've got all of this to defend with. And a nice thing is I've got the guard right here. So with the guard, I can pull it down and then I've got my other sword as well, of course. Potential concerns here with the spine resting against the arm. First off, it should be a single-edged sword. We can agree on that, right? Even if it's a relatively wide spine, relatively thick blade, it's not going to be super comfortable to block with this statically. So uh, with padding, on the other hand, it shouldn't really be an issue. Now, the difference here between reverse grip and this is um, with a reverse grip, you can actually brace the flat against your forearm. So if we do the same thing, nice thing is here, it dissipates the force a little better. The problem is it doesn't cover my entire forearm. So depending on the angle that it comes in, the sword may partially contact my arm. In fact, right there it does. That's actually an advantage in this position right here because the width of the blade provides some safety buffer, keeping the opponent's blade further away from your arm. Doing it like this is also not ideal. The danger of a reverse grip parry is leading with the hand, which leaves it quite exposed. That's an advantage of the tonfa position where the hand is covered. Keep in mind, this point is easy to overstate. Also, when comparing different hilt designs, hands are generally pretty exposed, unless you're fighting with a basket hilt or something like that. Technique matters more than sword design. It's probably not going to slide because it's edge on edge. So what's likely going to happen is they will bite. So that works. And now I have some control. And again, I can use this and counter. So that in and of itself isn't a terrible idea. Um, also, you can use the grip right here. So if he attacks, I cover it here and boom, this is my defense, this is my barrier. So whichever angle comes, just randomly throw a couple of angles. There's right here, boom. So this works quite well defensively. Uh, you can, of course, also choose to use the other weapon for the right side, or, you know, if you're lefty, reverse. So if he attacks on this side, I might just use this and then slice. And the problem is slicing is kind of the only thing I can do here, because th this is not a good cut. Because I, I cannot engage my wrist here, it doesn't flex more than this, which is uh, really not ideal. Normally, when you cut, you cut with, with a bit of wrist snap. So you can't really do that here, so it's pretty much just slicing against thrusts. So if you thrust straight forward, I can catch it like this, and I've got it on the guard here, which is useful because now I can push it in and uh, thrust or do whatever, really. So this is pretty useful right there. If I catch a cut, so if he cuts straight down, boom, I catch it right here, got control there. And of course, 
having two swords, I can press the offense a little bit better. So if I, if I cut here defense, now I've got this to work with. I can move in here and slice the arm, for example. Say, slice, thrust. Now, he's not going to just stand there, of course. So I would have to basically do this in one go, ideally, because this is one action, right? One action. So as soon as I move, he moves. So I'm going to have to figure something out here. And that's where this is a, a drawback compared to a sword in a forward oriented conventional grip. Because this way I'm going to have to do one and then two and then whatever, right? He, in the meantime, he can act. If I'm holding it in a conventional grip, I can do this. I can attack with this in the same tempo because I've got that reach. I've got zero reach here. So in other words, you could hold it like this, which means now I've got that. And of course, this is a powerful thrust here like that. So would this be better than the other version? Not necessarily. Here's one big drawback. If he binds it, I can't do anything to hold against it. Uh, depends a little bit on the grip shape. I've made this wider so that it it locks in the right position a little bit better, but even so, even if I turn the edge in, it's just, it's working against me and it wants to turn in my hand. So this is not the greatest grip. This would be mitigated if it was strapped to my arm, but if it was, then I can't change it. Then it's just this position, that's it. So at that point, you would be better off using a pata sword gauntlet. If you wanted to switch between the two, also, by the way, if you wanted to do actual tonfa techniques, it's not really gonna work with a with a sword because you'd be smacking them with a the flat, which hurts, but it's not as effective. For an actual cut, you would need to do it like this. What I could do is open here and then attack the leg, for example, things like that. But uh, let's let's go back to this position here. So this is much better for defense, of course. Offense. Uh, what am I going to do here? <laughs> this is not going to be my main weapon. So I could keep this in front of me uh, to defend so I can try to move in safely. And the nice thing is I've got plenty of cover here. I can cover with the grip. I've got the guard and then I've got the blade. So that's actually not terrible. The one thing I don't like about this is the potential to stab myself because this is, uh, you know, pointing the blade at yourself, it's not the smartest thing you can do. Now you could, of course, eliminate that problem by simply chopping off the tip. And then you can't use it for offense either, but at least you don't risk stabbing yourself. Or you just gotta train more and be aware of that. But I, I never liked the idea of being in a situation where, you know, like you, I don't know, you deflect, like this, this alone, okay? I hit strike his sword aside and I'm already pointing at myself, okay? Even if I do this in the best possible sc uh, scenario, so I've got control here, I'm immediately pointing the sucker at myself. I don't like that at all. Also an argument to be made in favor of curving it forward. I wouldn't stab myself necessarily, maybe in the leg, but less of a risk. And uh, if it was forward curved, I could use this pretty well to uh, attack here, you know, like that. I wouldn't be able to thrust like this, that's a drawback, but if I'm this close, I can literally smack him in the face with the grip, which is uh, rude. Now, you can also switch, of course, and that's one thing I like about this arrangement here. It's just an option. It does not render the sword useless as a sword, it's, it's just got this, this grip as a quill on. It's actually really not a problem. You can do anything that a sword does, essentially. That's a more conventional form of dual wielding right there. A longer sword and a, and a shorter sword or a dagger. The reason why it's traditionally a shorter one is because if you have two full-size ones, they interfere. Like you have to work around it, basically. And you know, like if I, if I want to be in this guard, 
Now I, I can't cut down like this anymore because I'd be hitting my own blade, so I have to get this out of the way. You know, not a big deal with the right training, but it's, it's something. This, on the other hand, does not get in the way. I can easily work around this the same way as with a buckler or what have you, and I can use this defensively. So that's actually pretty useful, but could you do that with a reinforced bracer or something? Yeah, yeah, you could basically. You could attach a blade or a spike to reinforced armor and use it that way. In fact, you could also use a, a strapped shield with a spike. Talked about that in another video. So um, it's not completely useless by any means. It's definitely gimmicky. It's not the most practical thing that I would personally choose. But hey, it's, uh, it's doable, if you insist. I think a flat tonfa design from Suikoden 2 is a good way to do it. Although I'd want to reinforce the entire length with steel rather than just the ends. It could even have a blade or spike in the front. Either way, the question remains, why not just use a shield? Anyway, thanks for watching and have a good one, folks.